guys, so welcome back. So after analyzing FET in DC, now it's the time that we will analyze it in AC. Okay? Hindi naman nalalayo ang pag-a-analyze ng FET sa BJT. Still, formula-based tayo. Ang reference ko pong ginamit ay si Boylestad. There are a lot of formulas here, so it would be better if you summarize the formulas. Okay? So, let's move forward first on the different FET transistor configuration. Okay? So, kung babalikan nyo si BJT, meron tayong tatlong configuration. Common emitter, common base, and common collector. Dito po sa FET, ang meron tayo is common source, common gate, and common drain. Or tinatawag po nating source follower. Remember, Source is uh, analogous to emitter, gate is analogous to base, and drain is analogous to um, collector. That is why ang um, common source ay parang common emitter lang, ang common gate ay parang common base, at ang common drain ay parang common collector po natin. So, si common collector ay tinatawag nating emitter follower. So, si common drain ay tinatawag naman nating source follower. And it makes sense kasi nga po, um, nag-analogous uh, ang mga terminals nila. So, si common source ay merong phase inversion na 180 degrees. Kaya kung mapapansin nyo, ang formula niya may negative. Well, that's later on. Kung napansin nyo sa common emitter, siya lang din yung merong phase inversion sa tatlo. Kasi si common gate and si common drain ay pare-parehas may phase inversion na 0 degrees. Ibig sabihin, wala kayo makikitang negative sa formula. Okay guys. Ang isa sa mahalagang parameter na ini-specify sa specification sheet ng mga FETs ay yung tinatawag natin transconductance GM or transadmittance. Pag hindi po binibigay si GM, ang binibigay po ay si GFS or GOS or simply YFS or YOS. Basta dinidenote siya ng either letter G or letter Y. Again, transconductance or transadmittance. So, this is an equivalent, the equivalent circuit of JFET, guys. As you can see, yung input impedance natin dito, mismong JFET lang po ito, ah. Yung input impedance mo dito is open. Do not forget na ang isa sa feature ng JFET is having high input impedance to the point na consider natin siyang around 100 to 1,000 mega ohms or simply parang open circuit na po. Kaya open na po yung nandito. And then, may iba't iba tayong type ng biasing circuit na naaral natin sa DC analysis. Yung mga resistor, ikakabit lang po natin. Still, yung step ng pagkoconvert ng isang circuit sa DC, papuntang AC, kapag BJT, ay ganun din po ang ginagawa kapag FET. Okay? Kung ang BJT ay merong AC emitter resistance or yung R'A, Ang JFET po, ang isang laging hinahanap ay si AC drain resistance or small letter R sub D. So, nakukuha po ang AC drain resistance kapag ginamit mo ang transconductance mo. So, that is just 1 over GOS or GFS or 1 over YOS or YFS. Basta sinabi ko sa inyo, it's either denoted by letter G or letter Y. So, unahin muna natin yung mga different biasing circuit kapag ang configuration natin ay common source. Again guys, remain a uh, reminder that the only configuration that has a phase inversion among JFET is the common source. Kasi mamaya pagdating natin sa eMOSFET, meron din po yung negative. So, for a fixed bias circuit, so, yung JFET, papalta natin ang AC equivalent circuit. Ito po yun. Kung napansin nyo, open yung side kasi nga ang JFET natin is operated always in reverse bias. Thus, it offers very high input impedance. Okay? So, kung ikakabit ko si RG, nandito siya sa input side. At ang nasa output side ko is yung drain resistance ko na RD. Drain resistance ko ha, hindi yung R'D. 
or R sub D or si AC drain resistance. Si AC drain resistance po ay yung equivalent resistance ng JFET natin. So, to get the input uh, impedance, tingnan mo lang yung nasa input side niya. Ano po ba yung nasa input side niya? Yung RG mo lang po or gate resistance. And then, kung titingnan mo yung output side, parallel po si RD na DC at RD na AC. That's why your input, uh, your output impedance is just the parallel equivalent of this two resistor. And to get AV, that is just simply output voltage divided by the input voltage. Ganun naman po lagi ang gate. So that's negative GM times the, in, the output impedance. So if you're going to see this one, this is just the same as the output impedance po. So, meron tayong approximations, kaya po tayo may approximations kasi yung mga formulas po natin pagdating sa exact analysis ay masyadong mahahaba. And it is practical thing to do na gamitin yung approximations. Kaya lang po, meron tayong mga parameters na kailangang sundin. Okay? So, itong formula na to gagamitin mo lang kapag yung AC drain resistance mo ay mas malaki or almost equal sa 10RD mo. And for um, voltage gain, that is just negative GMRD. So as you can see guys, yung um, voltage gain is just negative GM times ZO kapag fixed bias po yung circuit natin. Okay? So ako hindi ko tinitingnan yung formulas. Ang tinitingnan ko or yung minememorize ko or kinakabisado ko is yung equivalent circuit. Ito po. Kasi kapag yan tinignan ko, alam ko na agad na ito si ZI, ito si ZO. Na ang aalamin ko na lang ay si AV. If you want to know the whole derivation of formulas, nasa Boylestad lang po yan. Pero nung student ako, ayoko ng derivation kasi masyadong um, nawe-waste yung time ko sa pag de derive So, doon na lang agad ako sa direct formula. Okay? And yung circuit, hindi ko kinakalimutan yung itsura. So, let us try to solve this sample problem from the book of Boylestad. I have used 11th edition by the way. Kasi kapag yung 7 at 9, medyo pixelated yung mga pictures and hindi ko masyadong makita. And yung my solution manual actually is si, um, si 11th edition. Mas, ma mas madaling hanapin. So, let's read the problem. The fixed bias configuration of example 7.1 had an operating point defined by BGSQ of negative 2 volts and IDQ of 5.625 milliamperes with IDSS equal to be 10 milliamperes and pinch of voltage to be negative 8 volts. The network is redrawn in figure 8.14 with an applied signal of VI. The value of YOS is provided as 40 micro siemens. So, we are asked to determine the transconductance GM, the AC drain resistance RD, the input impedance and the output impedance as well as the voltage gain. Okay guys, so getting back to your this analysis, GM is equal to GMO quantity 1 minus VGS all over DT. And if GMO is not given or GM0 is not given, it could be computed using this formula. 2 IDSS all over the absolute value of the pinch of voltage. So, para hindi ko na siya compute in separately, ipasok ko na lang to dito. So, we have now the formula for transconductance to be 2 IDSS all over the absolute value of VP all multiplied by 1 minus VGS all over the pinch of voltage. So we just substitute the, uh, the values for IDSS which is 10 milliamperes, VP for negative 8 volts, and VGS for negative 2 volts. Actually, mas madali yung problems kapag FET kasi unang-una binibigay na po si na, si na VGS. Hindi tulad kay VGT na sinosolve pa natin yung DC. Okay? So, pag ginawa natin yan, we will find out that the value of the transconductance is 1.88 milli Siemens or Siemens. Okay, remember that the unit for conduct conductance sorry, is Siemens. 
Okay, I hope this is very clear to you. Moving on. If you want to find the input impedance, as you can see, pag tinignan mo naman po yung input side mo, ang meron lang natin is yung drain, I'm sorry, yung gate resistance. Okay? Gate resistance lang po ang meron natin. So, kapag ginawa mo, ginawa mo po yun, ZA is just equivalent to the gate resistance which is 1 mega ohms. Okay? If you were asked to find the ZO, diba ipaparallel mo lang si drain resistance kay AC drain resistance na RD, yung maliit lang po. Okay? Remember, kapag maliit na letter yung ginagamit, AC kapag malalaki, DC po. Eh, paano mo hahanapin si AC drain resistance? 1 over YOS. May binigay bang YOS? Meron po. 40 micro -shamens. At kapag ginawa natin yun, 1 over 40 micro -shamens, that is equivalent to 25 kilo ohms. Okay, so meron na tayong RD ngayon. If we were asked to find ZO, eh di pagpaparalel lang natin sa si 25 kilo ohms at 2 kilo ohms. And that the value that we will get is 1.85 kilo ohms. This time, if we want to find the voltage gain, it is just negative GMZO or GMRD yung approximation natin. So, we found out that the GM is um, yung value kanina, that's negative 1.88 millisiemens. And kapag pinagparallel natin to, that is equivalent to 1.85 kilo ohms. And if we try to calculate this, what we will get for the voltage gain is a negative 3.48 volts. Okay? So, ano yung gusto kong takeaway nyo dito? If you're going to observe, guys, kapag tayo ay nag-fed, ah, nag-BJT, malalaki yung gain natin. Pero kapag fed po, maliliit lang yung gain natin. Masyadong malaki na nga actually yung 10. <coughs> Okay, kasi ang isa pong disadvantage ng FET is that having lesser gain. Pero with regards to advantage, ang mga FET naman po ay mas gamit kapag matataas yung frequency. Kasi with regards to frequency, mas malawak yung frequency range na pwede mong gamitin siya compared kay BJT. And kung titingnan nyo yung sagot natin sa voltage gain, may negative which implies that there is a phase inversion na 180 degrees. Since, do not forget na ang ginagamit natin ay common source. Okay? So, this question is from India Beats. Referring to this figure, calculate the voltage gain if YOS is 20 micro -shimens. So, again, the formula for the voltage gain is negative GMZO. So, the first thing that we need to find is the ZO. But, uh, we cannot find it yet. Okay? So, what we have to do is to do KBL here. So, that's negative 2 volts minus VGS equals 0. And we will find out that the VGS is equal to negative 2 volts. Okay? Bakit natin kailangan ng VGS? Kasi magko-compute po tayo ng transconductance. Okay, so using this formula and the, the value of the VGS that we have computed, which is negative 2 volts, and in specify naman ang value ng pinch of voltage, we will find out that the value of the transconductance is negative 1.875 millisiemens. So since we have now GM, we can move forward to get R. ZO or output impedance which is DC drain resistance parallel with AC drain resistance. So we have already RD from our circuit which is 2 kilo ohms. The only thing that we need to find out is the AC drain resistance but we also have the formula for AC drain resistance which is 1 over YOS and YOS is given to be 20 micro shimmins. and 1 over 20 micro is just 50 kilo. So, if we were going to get the equivalent uh, resistance of 50 kilo ohms in parallel with 2 kilo ohms, that is approximately equal to 1.92 kilo ohms. And then we can move forward to find the value of the voltage gain, and that is equal to negative GMZO. 
So, negative 1.875 millisiemens all multiplied by 1.92 kilo ohms, and that you will find out that the value of the voltage gain is equal to negative 3.60. Okay? Um, Nag-check ako ng FET amplifiers na section sa Injabix and medyo madaming erroneous po doon. Um, Masasuggest ko lang, yung nandito, yun yung nakita ko na kaya at madaling computein. Yung sa iba, um, talagang much better na ilux spam na lang po natin. Para hindi din masayang yung oras natin para mas madami tayong mabasa. Okay? So, yun po yung naging technique ko. And sa so tingin ko naman, effective. Okay? So, this time, we were asked to find ZO. And a moment later, nakita na natin naman yung value ng ZO, which is 1.92 kilo ohms. guys. So, uh, plug lang ako ng konti. Don't forget to subscribe. Arvin, ben, Arvin Aldover Beno. I will help you with your academics. Okay, thank you. Next circuit is the voltage divider bias. Kung naaalala nyo yung voltage divider bias sa BJT, pinagpaparalel natin to para makuha yung ZB. Okay? Sa FET po kasi, kung titingnan natin dito, yung input impedance mo is yung parallel combination ng R1 and R2 mo. Or simply the R upper and the R lower. Okay? Still, yun pa din naman po ang ZO mo at yun pa din ang AV mo. So, wala pong masyadong iba sa fixed bias at voltage divider bias. Kaya hindi po kayo mahihirapan sa pagkocompute. Okay? Next circuit is self-bias. Ang kinaiba po ng self-bias sa fixed bias is that yung fixed bias, meron ka ditong supply and wala ka ditong resistor or shorted lang to. Eh, ang self-bias, meron ka po ditong resistor and meron ka po dito and wala ka ditong voltage source. Okay, so this is self-bias circuit but with a bypass RS. Okay, remember that the capacitor C1 this one and this two, they are called the coupling capacitors. While this one, CS, is what we call the bypass capacitor. So it provides an easy ground, thus providing a more stable operation for, um, for JFET. And if you could remember, with uh, AC analysis of BJT, if we put a bypass capacitor, we could get a higher gain. At kapag wala po si bypass capacitor, mas mababa po yung gain natin. Okay? So, again guys, your input impedance and output impedance and voltage gain is not different with the, with the formulas from fixed bias. Okay? So, nothing new. Ngayon naman guys, paano kapag unbypass na yung RS natin or tinanggal na po natin ito dito. Okay? So, your ZI is not, will not change while your ZO and AV, the formula is kind of bit complicated right here. Okay? So, kapag ganyan nakita ko ng mahaba, hindi na ako napunta sa exact analysis. Sana ako napunta sa approximations. Pero still, bago po ako mag-compute, sinacheck ko kung pumapasok ako doon sa criteria natin if your AC drain resistance is greater than or equal to the 10 times the DC drain resistance. Kasi kapag pumasok po dyan, therefore, pwede po natin gamitin ang ating mga approximations. Pero madalas naman, isang beses yata ako naka-encounter na hindi pwedeng gamitin yung approximations. So, hinulaan ko na lang. Sa haba ba naman ng formula, alamin ko pa, eh, matindihan na yung laban namin. Okay. So, yun lang yung mga advices, guys. By the way, if you have any questions, feel free to comment it down. Thank you. So, we have here a circuit. So, let's read the problem. The self-bias configuration example 7.2 has an operating 
point defined by BGS to be negative 2.6 volts and IDQ as 2.6 milliamperes. IDSS is 8 milliamperes and pinch of voltage is negative 6 volts. The network is drawn as shown in the figure below with an applied signal of VI. The value of the GOS is given as 20 microsiemens. Determine the transconductance, the AC drain resistance, and the input impedance. Um, actually, do not mind the ND. Let's just complete the ZO and let's compute for the AV. So to get the value of transconductance, um, it's not too different with the previous problems. It's just the same thing. We will find the transconductance to be negative 1.51 millisiemens. Pwede ba sabi ko sa inyo, mas madaling mag-solve kapag FET kasi halos bigay na lahat. Formulas na lang yung dapat mong wag kalimutan. Okay? Next thing, let us find the value of AC drain resistance. So, so sa mga previous problems natin, ang binigay sa atin ay parameter Y or yung YOS or YFS. And kung you observe mo dito, ang binigay sa atin ay GOS. Well guys, it is just the same thing. Magkaiba lang kasi yung parameter na ginagamit nila sa pagdi-denote. So, RD is 1 over GOS and our GOS is 20 microsiemens and 1 over 20 microsiemens is 50 kilo ohms. Your ZI, kung titingnan mo yung circuit mo, is yung gate resistance lang naman po natin. Hindi naman po yun maiiba. So, still, that's 1 mega ohms. And your ZO is equal to RD. That's 3.3 kilo ohms. Um, approximate na lang yung ginamit ko dito. And your AV is negative GM RD 1 plus GM RS. And that is equal to one negative 1.99 or almost 2. Okay, so copy your notes. Moving on to the second type of configuration, we have the common gate. So common gate po kasi ang grounded naman dito ay yung gate natin. Okay? So as you can see, this is the DC circuit. Wala kang anumang makikita ang resistor dito. Ang meron lang natin is that it is directly connected to the ground. That's why it is common gate. Okay, so to find ZI, this is the formula. It's kind of lengthy compared to the other configuration. ZO mo, hindi naman po maiba, and this is your GM. So these are the approximation formulas, and still, you have to follow this criterion in order to use the approximations. Okay, guys? So, although the network in figure 8.27 may not initially appear to be common gate variety, a close examination will reveal that it has all the characteristic of figure 8.24 or the figure shown previously. If VGSQ is negative 2.2 volts and IDQ is 2.03 milliamperes, let us determine the transconductance GM, the AC drain resistance RD, ZI, ZO, and AV. Okay. So, GM, yun pa din naman po, we will find that our GM or transconductance is equals to 2.25 millisiemens. Computing furthermore for the value of the drain resistance that 1 over GOS. Pero may binigay ba GOS? Meron po. Tingnan natin yung circuit. That is 50 microsiemens. So, 1 over 50 microsiemens is equal to 20 kilo ohms. To find ZI, approximate value na lang po yung ginamit ko kasi pasok naman po tayo sa criteria. So, that's 1.1 kilo ohms all over 1 over 2.25 millisiemens or equal to 316.55 ohms. To find ZO, that is just our output uh, resistance or the drain resistance that is equal to 3.6 kilo ohms. 
So to find GM, this is just the formula. And you will find that your GM is equal to, uh, your EV is equal to 7.02. 7 okay? Kung i-compare nyo yung formula natin, kapag common source at common gate, wala kang nakitang negative kapag common gate. It only signifies na wala po tayong phase inversion kapag common gate po. Okay. Next circuit is for the common drain or simply the source follower. Ang grounded naman dito po ay ang ating drain. Kung nakikita nyo, pag tumingin tayo sa drain, wala po tayong connection na wala po tayong makikita resistor. So, ZI, still that's the RG. ZO, ipaparallel mo lang po ang iyong RD, RS at 1 over GM. And this is the formula for AV. Still, you have the approximations formulas. So, a DC analysis of the source follower network in figure 8.32 results in the value of VGSQ to be negative 2.86 volts and IDQ to be 4.56 milliamperes. So, let us again determine GM, RD, ZI, ZO, and AV. So, computing for the value of the GM, that is equal to 2.28 millisiemens. And to compute for the value of RD, that's 1 over GOS, which is specified to be 25 microsiemens, and that is equal to 40 kilo ohms. To find for the value of RG, um, of ZI, that is just equal to the value of the gate resistance, which is 1 mega ohm. As you can see, paulit-ulit lang po yung formulas natin. So, Z, uh, to find the value of ZO, you just need to get the parallel equivalent of RD, RS, and 1 over GM. So, computing for the parallel equivalent of those three resistance, that is equal to 362.38 ohms. And to get for the value of AV, that is approximately GM, RS, all over 1 plus GM, RS. So, pag kinompute natin yan, that is equal to 0 0.83. Remember, yung common collector, ang um, nakukuha po nating value, common collector or, or emitter follower, ang nakukuha po natin yung value ng voltage train is approximately equal to 1. And hindi po nalalayo dun yung value ng common source, which is... 0.83. So, approximately equal to 1 pa din naman po. Tama po ba? Okay. And then, let's move on with the uh, E-MOSFET. Okay? So, ito lang po yung formulas for E-MOSFET. Again, E-MOSFET po kasi kung titingnan po natin yung ating uh, schematic symbol, broken yung lines natin. Ano nga ibig sabihin ng broken lines? It only signifies that your channel is not physical or it has no physical or structural channel. Ini-enhance pa po. So, RF here from the input impedance is just the feedback resistance here. This one po. Okay, so nothing new. You just have to be familiar with the formulas. So, the EMOSFET of figure 8.40 was analyzed in example 7.10 with the result that K is equal to 0.24 times 10 raised to negative 3 ampere per voltage squared. Your gate to source voltage is 6.4 volts and the IDQ is equal to 2.75 milliamperes. So, let us determine the transconductance, the RD, the ZI, the ZO, and AV. Okay, common mistake is that yung formula for transconductance ng isang E-MOSFET is nagagawang katulad ng pang D-MOSFET and JFET. Remember that the formula for transconductance, if we have a, an E-MOSFET is equal to 2K quantity VGS minus VGS TH. So given na po naman yung parameter K, we could easily compute kasi meron din tayong VGS na computed na. NVGSTH or threshold voltage na 3 volts. 
So if we would like to know the value of GM that is just equal to 1.63 mini shimmets. To find for the value of RO, so that's 1 over GOS, or equal to 20 micro shimmets. But in inverse natin yon, or 1 over 20 micro shimmets, that is equal to 50 kilo ohms. So, sa ZI, medyo kakaiba yung formula. That's RF1 plus GMRD. So, that's 10 mega ohms all over 1.63 millisiemens times 2 kilo ohms. And that is equal to 2.35 mega ohms. So, approximately ZO is just equal to the drain resistance which is 2 kilo ohms. And for to compute for the value of AB, negative GMRD, so that is equal to negative 3.264. So, pwede pala nating gamitin conclusion na kapag ang eMOSFET ang ginagamit natin, meron tayong phase inversion. Samantalang si JFET, may phase inversion ka lang kapag ang ginamit mong configuration is common source. Okay? This is for the voltage divider eMOSFET. I do not have a sample circuit here kasi all formula based lang po talaga ito. So, sinamarize ko na yung formula para sa inyo and sulat nyo na lang sa isang index card or manila paper na lagi nyo makikita para hindi kayo naninibago sa formulas. So, again guys, I am Engineer Arvin B. Aldover, skilula bilang Engineer Beno and do not forget to subscribe. Okay, so bye guys. Thank you.